Welcome to Haley in Bookland. Are you ready? Aye aye, Captain. I can't hear you. Aye aye, Captain. Oh. Hey everyone, it's Haley. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Haley, and I am here with two of my best friends, the ladies of Bookmarked. So I am here with Hannah from A Clockwork Reader and Zoe from Read by Zoe. So today we are going to be filming some collabs and we are doing the judging a book by its cover challenge, which we just made up. I don't think anyone has done it I think before. It's, I think it's kind of a thing. Is it a thing? Okay. Yeah. Then we're doing the thing of judging a book by its cover. So we asked you guys to send us some random book covers and we also so just pick some random book covers and we are going to be trying to guess the synopsis synopses whatever go. these books are about and see if we can actually get it so let's get started so our first book is Paw in Order by Spencer Quinn what do we think this book is about <laughs> what does it say on the bottom New York Times best-selling author of dog on it I love him honestly Spencer Quinn it's a Chet and Bernie mystery oh Ooh. I thought it was a police dog at first but but he might become like district attorney. <laughs> They're I, kind of like the capital though. Yeah. So like it kind of looks like I I want to say the dog becomes president. I that's what I would also prefer. want to concur. And I want to say that say Chet is president. I want Bernie to be vice president. Wait, I thought Bernie would be the name of a dog. I thought Chet was the dog. I thought they were both dogs. <laughs> Oh, there's a guy on the cover. I don't oh, care about the guy. Yeah, I care I about that the that dog. The guy no. does not so matter. one of them has to be Chet and one has to be Bernie. Oh. I think the dog is Chet. I think that's a cute dog Yeah, that's name. a dog name to me. I think Chet is the dog. Zoe disagrees. They both could be either. That's it's true. true. A guy named Bernie naming his dog Chet makes sense. I feel like it'd be a guy it's named magical. Chet naming his dog Bernie. It could go either way. But what do we think happens to Chet and Bernie? I think that the dog is president. Yeah. Then what? So what is the owner doing? Okay, just being there for moral support. Realistically. <laughs> <laughs> to help with all the difficult decisions. Well, it's a mystery. Realistically, I feel like That's Bernie true. slash Chet, whichever one is the human, <laughs> becomes the president and he has a dog. And then there's some sort of like mystery in the White House that needs to yeah. be solved. And then Chet slash Bernie, the dog, ends up solving the mystery because he's better than everybody else. But it's not in front of Maybe the White House. Maybe he becomes like Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah, it's not it's the, the White House. Of the capital. He might become like senator. Sure, he becomes a senator. On his way to That's becoming the president. I'm no. thinking. I'm <laughs> it's the Capitol building. What's the Capitol building? It's, it's like, where the House of Representatives mm, and like the Senate meet. Maybe Bernie or Chet, the owner, is Canadian, but his dog's American, and so he's having the dog run for president. Maybe that's why. That's a whole mystery. Interesting. So it's a mystery. Yeah. What do we think the mystery would be? How he became president. As a dog. As a dog. <laughs> How did he I swear love. into office as a dog? Oh, did he bark he, the whole thing? He put his little paw. On yeah. The, what would his Bible be? There are so many things to choose from. Chance. Yes. <laughs> Spencer Quinn is doing. He's doing. He's doing such good yeah, work yeah. for all of humanity. Yeah. So what it's actually about? So it is the seventh installment in this series. K9 narrator Chet. Chet is the dog. And PI <laughs> Bernie Little journey to Washington mm. D.C. and the dog eat dog world of our nation's capital. What is Chet short for? Is it? I thought that was usually short for I like Charles. I think it's just Chet. I don't know. I think just yeah. It's just it's Chet. Just Chet. I mean, just Chet. Question. Okay. How does Chet get to know a powerful D.C. Operative. Because he's smarter Does he than talk? all of them. I told you. Is it a you. talking dog? I don't know. Does he have to talk to be smarter than everybody else? No, I support him in all of <laughs> his decisions. Sniffed, he sniffed their butt. And there's the strange blinking eyes of a bird. Very confused. A guinea pig. There's a guinea pig named Barnum with the fate of the nation in his tiny paws. I love Wait, the guinea pig's paws? Yes! <laughs> So the guinea pig, guinea pig yes, the guinea pig is the villain. Do you remember that movie, Cats and Dogs? Yes. With like the yes. evil cats. Yes. That's what I think yes. the evil guinea pig I is. I think this is it. Our second one is one that I'm particularly excited about, and it is the Llama of Death. Why are these all <laughs> animal what? mysteries? They're a all gun. animal mysteries, apparently. <laughs> a gun zoo mystery is gun. Also, zoo in the name background, or... there's like a picture of a pelvis, like pelvic bone. Oh yeah, that's confusing. I okay, have so I think the llama is in this zoo. So it's being held in this zoo and the llama has started eating people. That's why there are bones. So then they mysteriously start finding bones. What a um, dilemma they're left with. Oh! 
Oh, there's a quote from Publishers Weekly. Animal lore. And human foibles spiced with a hint of evil. Animal lore. I'm telling lore. you, the llama <laughs> eats the llama people. Is evil. They suddenly find start. They suddenly start to find like bones buried everywhere in this zoo, and they don't know how. They think someone's committing serial murder, and then in the end, they find out that this <laughs> llama with his demon eyes is killing and eating everybody. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> You know he's up to no good. I think he's gotten away with it for years. Oh yeah, yeah. and he's getting cocky. He's yeah. been doing it for a llama time. Come on! Well, oh, okay. So it looks like it's during a Mayfair. Oh, oh there's, there's, a, Maypole. there's a Maypole. Maybe he bites through the Maypole and it comes crashing so where down does he live? onto someone's head, and then he—that's when he or gets he the, bites. That's when he gets the taste for human blood. No, and then it starts happening your part. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or he, he bites through the maple and then it ends up actually like skewering somebody. Yeah. I was going to say that, there are but options. I feel like our llamas wasn't that bad at first. <laughs> Maybe he does it to only criminals. Maybe. At the He's Mayfair? Doing the work. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bunch of criminals. Yes. <laughs> at the zoo, He's Mayfair. He's keeping everyone safe. He looks like he could be a hero, but also... I think he's a hero in disguise. They deserve the world. Fair? Oh my god! I think it's yes. a renaissance fair. Because yeah. there's like a fake and castle. And he's there. Yeah. But why is he at the renaissance fair? So it's a zookeeper. Takes Alejandro, is the llama's name, to a renaissance fair to discover the still warm body of the owner of a local wedding chapel dressed in his royal robes as Henry VIII. <laughs> There are so many layers. Also, Alejandro's name is spelt wrong the second time. It's spelled differently. <laughs> no way. Yeah, you forgot it's the to, E. It's to blend in with his surroundings. He takes True. on different identities, with and without a name. At first, it appears as if Alejandro stomped the man to death, but a closer look reveals a crossbow dart in the man's back. I mean, both could have happened. Yeah. He could have gotten shot and then he just- Oh, it's an escaped convict! The dude who died is an escaped convict! What like, is the plot of this book? I feel like this is telling me the entire book and everything How are we that actually, happens. like, so right with this? Honestly! Like, wait, but, like, he he's an escaped convict and he owns, like, a wedding venue and he was Henry VIII? Is that yeah, the same he's guy? A, yeah, yeah. He was a wait, reverend. all of that is the same guy? <laughs> That's all the same guy. He was yeah, a reverend one dressed dude. as Henry yeah. VIII who was yeah. also an escaped convict who was murdered, yep. potentially stomped by a llama or maybe like shot in the back with an arrow. Yep. That's a way so to go. Ways. And then all of a sudden we don't hear about Alejandro again. He just does the apparent stomping and then they discover that he didn't stomp and then he's gone. <laughs> well, they discover that he didn't. I think they discover that he didn't stomp him and someone else committed the murder, but I think Alejandro actually placed the arrow there to make it I like, think so look too. like he didn't do it, but he actually did Done. kill the esca yeah. escaped convict slash Henry VIII slash Reverend. Yep. No, no, Alejandro without an E killed him. Alejandro oh, but Alejandro with, with the yeah. E. Yeah, right. He has a twin Brother. Fair point. Yes. <laughs> Wait, is that a book in a series? Yeah, it's the, it's the third one. What? Oh, <laughs> what a life. There's the anteater of death and then the koala of death. It's different animals that you would find at a zoo of death. Why is she bringing these zoo animals everywhere with her? Oh, puffin of death. Why a puffin? A puffin is so random. The otter of death. Yes. Okay, this next one is a gem. So this is, but you're a horse by David Bustle. He has hands, human hands. No, he is a horse. horse. <laughs> Jack Horseman wrote a romance novel, and this is what it is. You're not wrong. No. I think this is. I think that's literally what it is. Like you know how Jane the Virgin, they like wrote her book. This is Bojack's book. He was trying to write his biography like this whole time. Like he just cranked out an novel. From like yeah. here up, horse. From here down, vaguely horse, but human hands. Also very muscular horse. He just like has a really. Is well, He's I think everything about yeah, yeah that's true. everything about this like embrace moment is terrifying. I think it's a historical romance yes, because she's of what she's wearing yes, in her hair. Yeah, yeah. So I think she's like kind of like Merida, like she's very like yeah. active, adventurous, always on the horse. Go. Okay, <laughs> I can't say any of this. You can't say anything about okay. the horse. <laughs> she likes to go outdoors and with an animal companion. I'm not gonna say the word companion. Um, <laughs> The horse gets cursed, or she gets cursed, or maybe blessed? My maybe? question is, is it from the perspective of the horse, Absolutely. or from her perspective? It is totally... No, yeah. the title but is, but you're a horse. horse. True, but I just really want it to I be think it's her internal of conflict of the fact that she is sleeping with a horse. Nay! <laughs> Nay, like N-A-Y, no, but nay, like a horse. Eh? I hate this book. 
<laughs> I hate but it. Honestly, it's a lot. I think she took the horse for a ride one day and just didn't want to stop. <gasps> Next! <laughs> Take a moment of silence. <laughs> Where's the holy water? But what if it's like they meet in like the stables at night and because it's olden times, there's not electricity. So it's like actually dark and she's and then she sees hands. So she's like, it's a man. And then she wakes up in the morning. It's a horse. Oh, maybe he's like a werewolf. At night, he turns into Ooh. a man. At night, he turns into a man. And then, you know. You found a way to make it less creepy. It's like mm -hmm. actually in My Lady Jane, the dude keeps turning into a horse. <laughs> Why is so, that a thing? <laughs> that's an excellent book too. I really enjoyed it. But a collection of pranks, anecdotes, and gags that have nothing whatsoever to do with the cover of the book. That's amazing. That's beautiful. It's just like absurd stories and they have nothing to do with the cover of the book. That's so funny that's and really so funny. clever. And I also feel a lot better knowing that it's not about bestiality. <laughs> Me too. Next is Crouching Tiger, Forbidden Vampire by Carolyn Sparks. It looks like the same person right. who did the obsidian cover. Yes. <laughs> I feel What's like. What's in the background? Like a castle? Are those bats? I assume. It's bats. Right. Yeah, I bats. feel like it's vampires. So. Yeah. Dracula. Yeah. So it's about that time. So yeah. it's another historical romance. I think it's. It's probably... Look at that broody face. Ooh, Ooh damn. Look. I think that he's a vampire and she is like a were-tiger, so she turns into a tiger. Mm -hmm. And they fall in love, but... There's so many animals. Yeah. I oh, this is an animal! <laughs> I think that she probably, like... Like, it's like the werewolf-vampire conflict, but like this time it's were-tiger-vampire yeah. conflict. Just there. It's like forbidden love. Switch it up. I mean, there is a moon in the background. That's also just like a supernatural thing. True. So, but vampires. also... <laughs> Wear tigers. But I think they are in conflict because it's very red yes. tones. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's like, ooh. And forbidden. And he's mm -hmm. like staring like, I've had enough of this. He's like, no. Look at that face. He's like, I think this is going to be your next read. <laughs> You're very excited about this. I just have a lot of questions. Why is she crouching? Or if she is no. the vampire. Well, she, I mean, the, the tiger. Isn't that a thing though? Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon is a movie. Yeah, Hidden Dragon. That's a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. it's a martial arts movie. That was very popular. So I'm thinking maybe she could, she could, she could be a martial artist yeah, or something trying yeah. to take she could well, be a vampire hunter well and her hair makes me think that it might yeah, be yeah that makes sense she might be a vampire hunter yeah she could be a vampire yeah. hunter but she like she does martial arts mm -hmm. yes. so that makes sense yeah I hope that's what it is that actually does sound pretty good it's for a romance novel and I'm like oh <laughs> oh love at stake oh, oh. number 16 a marine termed vampire finds love with the shifter princess forbidden to him he wakes from a coma to find that he's become a vampire and now he has a thirst I see what you did there for revenge Determined to hunt down the master vampire who turned him, he meets Gia, even though he's used to working alone. Rule number one, their partnership is strictly business. If he holds her a little too close, if she looks at him with those exotic eyes, Ooh. No, thank you. Well, what does she shift into? That has to stop. A tiger. A tiger. But like, where does this take place? Oh, he's in charge. That's rule number two. And like rule number you're... three, don't fall in love. This is Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, she's also engaged. Someone better? Probably. <laughs> but I kind of wanted her to be... Mm, I, I, liked my yeah, I liked my idea. I liked your idea way better. I agree. So, The Benefits of Being an Octopus is the next one by Anne Braden. Number one benefit, eight arms. Multitasking. Number two benefit, still eight arms. What's number three? Squishiness. Uh, yeah. Breathing underwater. Yes. True. You can just like... Yeah. I'm Could you climb like this. walls? I'm thinking of finding Are Dory. Too <laughs> floppy though. I don't know. I guess they would. Well, be they able have the, to. the suckers. They have. Yeah, their tentacles will like. But do you latch have to things. be? Because I'm thinking it's another like shifter one. They like, turn mm -hmm. into. Yeah, because the way that it's like connecting mm -hmm. to the girl above, but it doesn't. It, it's like under grass. Well, I think she's walking. Yeah, she's walking off of stairs, so it's supposed to be kind of like grass, but then like. Yeah, but it's, it's actually water. like underwater. Interesting. Under so the octopus is like. Like her secret identity and she keeps it Octo hidden. Girl. Octogirl. <laughs> Is that the girl who had all the babies though? Octomom. 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 Very different. <laughs> I feel like this is probably one of those like literary fiction books that's like, oh, or, like speculative deep. fiction it's where deep. it's like deep. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm deep. thinking like Turtles Neo All the Way Down mm -hmm. where it's like the title really makes yes. no sense unless you've like read the line yes. of the book. She might be studying like marine biology True. is what I'm thinking. Maybe. I'm thinking she's really- Could be like really Aquamarine. In Except in the of it, I, I also love it. Exactly. It's Aquamarine. <laughs> yeah, that's a great movie. But yeah, it could be Aquamarine, but she just turns into an octopus instead. <laughs> I don't, th I think it Not is cool. a literary fiction. Yeah, I think, I, so. think I don't know, to me the cover doesn't strike me as Maybe literary Maybe she wants fiction. to be an octopus. Maybe. So that she studies like the sea and she's like, oh, kind of like opposite Little 
mermaid. Like, I yeah. want to live mm. under the sea. So she doesn't have to deal with, like, her problems in yeah. the real world. She pushes them under the surface. Oh! <laughs> so it's a seventh grader. So it's younger. <laughs> oh my god, she's literally thinking how much easier everything would be if she were an octopus. <laughs> I'm hitting all these. I did not. <laughs> no, I did not. I really that. thought this was an adult book. Eight arms to do eight things at once. Incredible camouflage ability and steady, unblinking vision. Powerful for protective defenses. Yeah, so I don't think it has anything to do with the actual story. It's just like she wants to do a lot of things and she can't do everything. So she's like being an octopus would be awesome. Multitasking. So it was a metaphor. Yeah, yeah. it's a metaphor. That's what you call it. But it's like, it's a metaphor. <laughs> no, Except with eight tentacles. Yeah. It's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. <laughs> yes. I'm ready for this one. <laughs> Next is A Tale of Two Biddies by Kylie Logan. Well, we know it's a cozy mystery. Also, yes. France? There are just so many things happening. We have France, we have rock. What's that? Flag. Yeah, it looks like yeah. a different There's flag. also the ocean behind it. Yeah, ocean. We've got books behind the cat. The cat is like, oh, it's playing with a dang. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Are they celebrating like Bastille Day or something? Maybe. With some rock and roll? Oh, maybe. Maybe it's in like Nice or something. I think the it cat has a tie dye collar bandana on. Mm. So the cat is like a hippie rock band musician. Well, okay. Cozy Mysteries always have cats on the cover. Yes. But they there's always a cat in the book, but it's never about the cat. So Should I think about it's about. Yeah, the why is it not about the cat? <laughs> That's where they get you. They're like promising all these cats, and then it's just like, I, I think wanted it's about it to be. A tale of two, two old ladies? <laughs> two old biddies. biddies. Yeah, a biddy is an old lady. But I, I don't know what it was. The cats. They, they probably own a lot of cats. It's me, the old lady who owns all of the cats. Well, it's a mystery. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe the old lady start a rock band, if that's why. Yes. And then they perform on Bastille Day, or something happens One on of them Bastille falls Day. into the ocean. The ocean? ocean? Yes. yes. Yeah. The cat rescues one of them. Yes, Can't absolutely. Save the other one. Or eats them after they've washed up to shore. They become cat? Like McGonagall? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was saying that like, they own the cats. And oh. then, I think one of the old ladies does die at a party. <laughs> what? Because too many cats. <laughs> they all <laughs> just fell on her at once. She was trying to snuggle all of them and I then she just drowned. I understand that struggle. Someone definitely does fall into the ocean though. Yeah, the ocean has to come up at some point. Or it could be another thing where there's just a bunch of stuff on the cover that True. has nothing to do with what's inside. So this is the League of Literary Ladies number two. Oh, it's on Lake Erie. They are celebrating best deal day though and they're reading so it's basically a book club and they're reading a tale of two cities oh i did not even think of and that and it's about elderly twins margaret and alice who run the local knitting shop this is so pure on bastille day the head banging rock band guillotine shows their chops for the tourists but the celebration is soon cut short with something needling the defarge dower dowers i don't know where that came from and i'm confused but there's a murder and they are going to have to try and solve it. The twins? The yes, old the, I love it. The old the two like knitting old I think ladies. it's the League of Literary Ladies <sighs> I mean, like as a whole is trying to do uh, it but it's just focusing on the twins. They have like an entire like community of people who solve these murders like old ladies. Yes. I love it. I they protect love themselves that. with their knitting needles. Yes. <laughs> it's like oh my gosh they just throw them <laughs> in the car. I think <sighs> Ian nailed it. Next is What the Cat Saw by Carolyn Hart. Once again we're going back to cat. I think the cat saw a lot of things. I think the cat definitely saw a murder. Mm -hmm. Yes, it saw something. It reminds me of what? the woman in the window, except the cat, cat in the window. The, the cat in the window. Yes. <laughs> and so the cat witnessed a murder. Yeah, because it's like those different those books that have been really popular since like Gone Girl, mm -hmm. like Girl on the Train, like those sort of things. But the next the trend is saw. what cats saw, like the cat on the train. I'm there. The cat in the window. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, cats are always in. Windows. This cat is in a window. What the cat saw will surprise and engage any mystery reader. How does the cat tell people about what it saw? Is there going to be like someone who speaks to cats? Like a horse whisperer? A cat whisperer? I want it to be me. <laughs> you? I want to be that person. I think that the cat saw its owner giving tuna to another cat and it was like, how dare? Yeah, like the ultimate betrayal. Be too Brutus. <laughs> <laughs> Or it saw that there are other cats outside and it was like, yo, why are you outside? I want you to be inside. And it or didn't it know that cats existed on the outside. It's a house that's that sad. Cats <laughs> go out. Yeah, that's really sad. That is sad. That got deep. Is the cat looking into the house? Could it be a stray cat? Oh. I think, I don't think it is because the outside it of looks the window like, yeah. is like weathered. Maybe weathered, it finally so. got inside after everybody inside died. 
and it crawled in. Started eating. It was like, hello, bodies. where'd everyone go? <laughs> wow, that's also tragic. I feel like this is just sad. No yeah, I think what. we've just decided that what the cat saw is just a sad story in general. There's a murder. Yes. It's about a woman with a curious ability that drops her head first into a world of intrigue and murder. Ever since the death of her fiance, she has found herself plagued by his sixth sense. She understands the thoughts of cats. <laughs> when they look into her eyes. I want to know what the I cat's thinking. It. Wait, so then how does the cat come into play? Oh, so like, does she witness a murder through the cat's eyes? I think that's what it is. Whoa. Yes, I think yeah. Is it no. Chet again? There's no cat name. Disappointing. It's the star of the book. So the former tenant was murdered and she wants to ignore what the cat saw. She encounters the previous tenant's cat and gets a flash of thought. Dead. Dead and gone. She left me. Board rolled on the second step. And that, that's all you get of the cat's thoughts. And she wants to ignore what the cat saw. But the idea of the dead not being an accident is something she can't ignore. But why would she want to ignore it? Is it because, because like, she doesn't, she's like, not my problem. Is it cheap rent or something like that? Apparently. And she's like, oh yeah. She's like, she's just gonna let someone get away with murder because yeah. she doesn't want to deal with this how to get away with murder don't, don't listen to the cat <laughs> never ignore your cat next we have one that is courtesy of zoe it is back river quiver by alexa riley and jessa kane i feel like this is some florida alligator hunter going out to like the swamp land romance his pants are all oh no it's overalls i do not Does see overall anything <laughs> I feel like is the romance with the alligator that he has around his neck or did he kill that alligator? No, I think he's doing that to impress. He's Who? like, yeah, I got a gator. Another alligator? Yeah, sure. He killed his, his, his loved gator one's girl. enemy. She oh. was a gator girl. She said, see you <laughs> later, girl. He wasn't good, good enough for her. Yeah, I think that's it. That's I exactly what that. happened. Yes. <laughs> with the song too. It. That's like, that's... Do you know what it's about? Yes, because I may have purchased the book. <laughs> Do you have it? You might have an ebook. Oh. Beautiful. Morgan is just looking to have a fun spring break. Ooh, it's Until spring break in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> but when she did, you're in Florida right now. Don't she ends up that. lost. <laughs> she ends up lost in a swamp, ankle deep in mud, and facing down a gator the size of Godzilla. Rickson. <laughs> Oh, he's looking for his rightful mate who will live with him in the swamp and bear his children. He's Shrek. Yes! <gasps> wow. Miss Fiona. I want to know how she was on spring break. And yeah, so if he finds him in the swamp. She's obviously dumb. She there's, li <laughs> there's literally a disclaimer that says this is amazingly terrible. Like, that's from the author. That's so funny. Uh -huh. Oh, there's animal res wrestling in it. Grab your overalls and bug spray. We're going to the bayou. <laughs> Wow. So I think we should buddy read that. So our last one is 12 Angry Librarians by Miranda James, which once again has a cat on the cover. <laughs> because it's a cozy mystery. All of them. Because oh. they're like, they have the best titles. Mm -hmm. I always love shelving in that section at work because I just laugh. They are amazing. I want to have that job. How do you be the one who titles cozy mysteries? Do you have to write, you them? write them? I don't want to write them. I just want to title them. I feel like you'd be so good somebody. at it. Okay, so this is a cat in the stacks mystery they are at a librarian's convention i think that the librarians are angry because there are so many people with overdue books and they're like no 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 you bring your books back i feel like if that were the case that would be like a thousand angry librarians because like True. every librarian is this probably is angry 12. about that yeah i feel like just okay so 12. they're at like a librarian's convention right so i'm thinking like like book con or something like when we go to like conventions and yes. stuff and like there are a bunch of us they're like all angry together because <laughs> I think that, well, if you've heard of like the movie 12 Angry Men, which is about like a jury trying to decide if somebody murdered somebody. So I think that there's a murder at the book convention oh. and then 12 witnesses come together to see like who they thought murdered that person or did committed they, the crime stole a book from the library i think there were 13 librarians and then one of them was murdered and then the 12 that weren't murdered are angry because they wanted That's to be fair. murdered no, no because, because they're like one you murdered our friend murdered. you made it sound they're like uh you should know you're not gonna be mad when i get murdered you're just gonna be like why wasn't it me that would be 12 depressed librarians yes. <laughs> that's yes. a different book how's the cat get there look at his smile one of them the cat did it cat. this cat did it <laughs> is a guilty cat. That's why it's the I've cat. seen enough guilty cats in my time to know. That cat's like, hey, it was me. Don't tell. 
So this is about, it essentially seems like it's Clue, but with librarians. So they have to find the killer in a room of librarians. I oh my it. God, the guy's known for walking his cat, arresting yes. a main coon named Diesel. Oh. The guy who got but murdered? he may soon be taken for a walk himself in handcuffs. Wow. I want to read this book. There's like old nemesis from library school. There's a lot of things happening. All right. So those are all of the books that we were going to try and guess what they were about. That was a really wordy sentence, but I didn't really know where it was going when I started, but we found our way home. But thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to check out Hannah and Zoe. I will have the links to their channels down below for you guys. Thank you. We're also, so don't forget to check out Bookmarked, which is every Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we just talk about all sorts of different bookish things. There's so much hand holding happening. I am uncomfortable. But, but I have a horse. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Bye.